In the summer, ranchers in the high mountains needed to move their cattle further and further to find water and food for their herds. In many cases, however, tight canyons and high bluffs prevented such movement, creating quite a difficult situation. To compensate, narrow gauge railroads in the hills would run special trains, long and slow concerts made entirely of cattle and stock cars. Typically, these jobs were long and disliked, running smelly and slow trains in the hot sun for a whole day. Oddly enough, however, Charlie, who seemed to dislike everything else, quite enjoyed these runs, finding them, uh, relaxing, I suppose. Oh, sorry, old boy. Missed the fire doors by, well, not much. Don't sweat it. I'm not in need of too much coal anyway. We'll be running downhill here in just a minute. Ah, okay. Jeez, you're in a good mood today. Pet, <laughs> am not. R2, he's enjoying his cow run, aren't you? Not even close. The air is just, uh, really fresh. Oh, come now, it's okay to like something, even with your usual hatred of, well... Everything. Yeah, yeah, don't go all sad sap on me now. Maybe I am enjoying myself, so what? So nothing. Hell, I'm glad. Now he's gonna call you soft, you know. Ditto. Anyways, it's all downgrade from here. Uh, are the retainers set? Should be. Forward brakeman left a little while ago to pull them. On most train cars in those days, and even quite a few now, air brake systems had special valves called retainers. These valves could be set by a brakeman or conductor to a number of positions, which would restrict certain amounts of air from the brakes, keeping them applied longer. In the mountains, retainers were almost a necessity to keep long, heavy constants from running away. Alright, that's a 20 pound stun on the pipe. Here we go! The only trouble was, each individual car had its own retainer, each needing to be set one at a time. On passenger cars, conductors and crew would just walk along the train and set the valves quickly. Though on freight trains, men would have to walk on top of the cars and reach down them to get at the retainers. This was a long, difficult task that would sometimes hold up trains. Proceeding without all the valves set could be dangerous, so running late was expected in some cases. Not that Charlie really cared that day. I can feel the cars holding back. I'd say we're set for the rest of the way down the mountain. Right, Lion. Now, if you'll excuse me. <sighs> I may take a few minutes for myself. Hey now, just because we aren't using steam doesn't mean you get to doze off. Watch your side for the curve here. Ugh, fine. At just 11 minutes past noon, Charlie and his crew arrived in Johnson with the loaded stock cars. Waiting for them was Dan, also ready to run a stock train to Douglas for the connection with the Milwaukee Road. He did not look happy. He's late, Runt. Runt? Who are you calling Runt, you ugly two-faced shark-nosed moron? Hey, screw you. You're the only one that's late. You made me late too. I'm going to be behind schedule because you're too slow. Honest, what respectable engine can't run on time. Is this guy for real? I don't know. He seems like the type with a few screws, Luke. Oh yeah? Maybe I'd get here sooner if I wasn't dreading meeting ya, you low droning noise. Noise, am I? Them cows is the noise around here. I swear I hate cattle. Noisy, slow, and... <sighs> Ugh, smelly. Oh, is that the smell? I thought that was the acrid stench they called diesel fuel. Ah, shut up, Luke. What are you good for? You putter around the hills doing 20, well, I'm... I'm impressive. I do 70 if I feels like it. I got business all over this country. I'm practically a celebrity. I could never stand celebrity types, Tinseltown twits. Oh, please. You've never even seen California. I've seen it all. You clearly haven't seen the look on my face right now. Or you shut your damn trap. Oh, look who's a tough guy now. What are you up on, cowboy? Go back to 1870. Hi. You wouldn't know 1870 if it smacked you upside the head. You're practically a baby. Baby? Hey, <laughs> you. I'm a baby, sure. But at least I'm not some washed up 30-something steam engine fireman. At least I don't wear a keystone like some kind of standardized superhero. Super Zero, if you ask me. I'm more super than you. I'm the goddamn Super Duper Chief. And yet, you're here. Hooked on to a line of old cattle cars. Hey. You wanna go, little guy? I'll take ya. I'll take all three of you with my lights off. You wouldn't even see me coming. Dan, don't even think about it.
Ah, sorry. I'll see you in the news, Shrippy. Do me a solid and get here in the right century next time. <laughs> well, that happened. Unfortunately. Pansy, prick. I'll show him. Oh, please. Don't listen to him, Charlie. He's, well... A dumbass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That. Right a friend of right of Pearl Harbor. Pressure. What? Ugh, I swear I... Huh. Charlie, your fire doesn't have any holes. You feeling okay? Dandy. Eesh, that was a special brand of bitter. You wanna talk about it, Gramps? No, and quit calling me that. Oh, come on, Char. You gotta talk about your feelings. Ow, was that really necessary? No, but I enjoyed it regardless. All right, what gives? You've been this pissed before, I mean, it's practically every day, but you never hurt either of us. Intentionally, that is. Yeah, yeah. What? You don't feel comforted? I don't want to talk about it. Get it? It bugs me just thinking of it. Just, just leave it. Mm, geez, fine. On about this time, I had sent rogue crews with Derrick down to the narrow gauge base of Scotch Flats for a serious restructure of the yard leaving the area rather disheveled. I'm afraid dodging cranes and ditches didn't help Charlie's mood that day, and by the time he got over to the shed where Palmer was waiting, he was practically flaming at the stack. Golly, what's up with you? Wouldn't you like to know? Whoa, okay, hit an earth there. No, I mean, Charlie, you can't just let whatever it is eat at you like this. It ain't healthy. Ha! <laughs> I've smoked more ash-ridden coal slack and drunk down more muddy water than any other engine on this line since when the hell have I cared about health? I mean, not quite as bad as Redding 425. I mean, that's just straight anthracite. That'd be Redding number 420, and he's a prick, so... Yeah, regardless, what, what about your happiness? Whatever's troubling you seems to be really eating at you. No, I don't care. I don't want to talk about Winston or being happy or my health. Winston? Who's Winston? No! Not now, not ever, not ever again! You done now? Uh, yeah. I'm good now. Good then. Now, who's Winston? Winston, uh... Well, Winston is my brother. We worked on the RGS together back in the day. He and I never really, uh... Well, we never really... Never really what? Got along, I guess. He was always trying to insert to assert himself as the Alpha Twin, running on a tighter schedule on the lack. I think that because of this one management eventually decided to sell one of us, it was me. Yeesh. And, uh, you didn't take it well? Didn't take it well? Ha! I, I was so happy to be away from him, I never looked back. I came here and never had to deal with that annoying with anyone picking on me again. Not until I met that damn idiot earlier today, that is. Oh, okay, now I see. So, you equate Dan with your brother. I just hate him. I can't stand being called out on something like that. Something I can never do. Something I never really cared about, and it has been used time and time again to prove myself worth. <sighs> huh. I mean, it doesn't really matter. Of course it don't matter. Do I look like some kind of racehorse? It just get my goat. If, if I had one, that is. I know. I'll show him he's so obsessed with running on time. I'll show him on time. Then we'll see who's old and outdated. Then we'll see who the Alpha Twin is. Oh boy. Well, this can only end well. 
<sighs> Golly, it's early. Uh, Charlie, what are you doing up so early? Morning, Palmer. Fine day we're having, eh? Uh, sure. Char, are you feeling okay? Fine and dandy. Ready to start the day. I'm just waiting on manager to get us our orders. I mean, it's 6 a.m. Manager won't be here for another hour. Ah, you see, that's where you're wrong. Manager always comes in early on Saturdays to read the morning paper and get a cup of coffee in town before work. He'll be here in just a few minutes by my watch. Ah. Ah. What on God's bloody earth is going on here? Up to, Basil. Look alive, soldier. Oh, Charlie, what are you on about? He's just... Um, you know, I'm not really sure. Oh, nothing out of the ordinary. Nothing at all to see here. Dear Christ! Yeah. Uh, what, what are we gonna do? We? I don't know about you, but I'm going back to bed. It's far too early for an engine like me, a finely calibrated machine such as I, to be working. I, unlike some here, need my beauty rest. If you ask me, you need a lot more than beauty rest to help you, Basil. Well, at least he's normal in that regard. Uh, Charlie, is this about the brother thing? What? No, of course not. This is not about the brother thing. Brother thing? Yeah, shut up, Basil. Nobody asked you. He's all freaked out over some comment with that stupid shark nosed idiot. Dan? I quite like Dan. Rather respectable. Very image oriented. Yeah, well, you're stupid. My word! And I might add, you are stupid! Nuh uh. Aren't you? Guys. What? What? Do we. How do. I mean. Ugh. You done? I suppose. Continue. You are stupid. Uh, you're stupid. No, you. You, you knuckleheaded bucket of bullshit. Ragged, fragged, fragged. Hop down. Oh. Busted. Now, what may I ask is the meaning of all this? Why, in God's name, are the three of you up so early, screaming so loudly, or wake half the valley? I mean, honestly. Can a man get any sleep around here? No. You cork it, mister. I've just about had it up to here with your antics. Now then, since you seem to be no help, I'll ask the only civil one around here what the high and holy hell is going on. Quite so. So, you see, manager. Frank, what's the meaning of all this? Well, all I know is Charlie requested to be fired up and cold a something about a cow one. Hmm. Well, Charlie, what's the matter with you? Sick or something? Open up your fire door. You might have taken on some lousy coal. Yeah, really, <laughs> that's that's quite all right, sir. I'm fine, truly. I would think not. I'd expect this early bird treatment from Eureka. Maybe Palmer if he was hyper enough. Hey! But most certainly not from you. You are supposed to be lazy, brash, and tiresome. So, what is the matter? Why are you being so... prepared? Hm! <laughs> if I may interject, sir! Oh, shut it, Basil. Don't you ever mail train to run? Of course not! That's preposterous! Oh! Uh, perhaps I do. RPO's on track two. Thank you! Christ. Has everybody lost their damn minds? I mean, honestly. Basil's late. You'll be intolerable, and it's been almost 30 seconds since Palmer has opened his mouth. Hey! Sir, I really am fine. I just, uh, I just wanted to make you happy by running early. That, that's all. Really, now? Well, you know what I think? What? 
I think your soul full of soot, your markers are black. Oh well, whatever you're up to, I suppose I'll humor you for now. I haven't had my coffee, so I'm in no mood to be otherwise agreeable. Now get back to work. Yes, sir. You know, sir, you really have a way with words. I, I really must say, you just... Don't you have some cause to switch or something? Yeah, right. Sorry, sir. I'm sorry to say that something was definitely wrong with Charlie's head. I mean, Dan's an asshole, but what he had said really had gotten to him. By the time he reached the cattle fence, he was somewhere between fuming and crazy denial. Oh, morning, Char. You're here early. Huh? Oh, what? Hey, yeah, I wanted to be early today. Real early. Uh, okay. I mean... I need to finish getting your cars put together, but once that's done, you can get moving. Excellent. <sighs> Finally. Maybe he'll shut up about it now. Ow! Oh, hey! Ow! Uh, this... this is normal. I see. So, what's the big hurry, Char? I mean, I know cattle goes dead on the law in 13 hours, but it's only a couple hours run between here and Johnstown. Eh, uh, no reason. Oh, he wants to beat that stupid Penzi engine into town. Teach him a lesson. What? Johnson? What could you have against him? I mean, he's kinda... Not that one. Dan. Ow. You behave. I'm not in the mood right now. Dan? Yeesh. Sorry you had to meet that sorry excuse for a locomotive. Never did like him. Only met him once on the dual gauge line in the valley, and he had the gall to call me a fat steel caterpillar. <laughs> it's not funny. I mean... It's kinda funny. Eh, to hell with ya. I'm not the one in a hurry to get my switching done. Huh? Oh, I'm sorry. Now that's more like it. Anyways, that's the last one. You ready to roll? Finally, yes. Yes, I'm ready. Hey, hey, hey. Speak for yourself. I need to catch up on this fire. That and we're low on water anyway. Ah, yeah, screw it. We're on a schedule here. Whoa, hey there. Don't forget who's in charge here. Yeah, yeah. Ooh, that does not sound good. Be careful on the hills, Charlie. Ha! <laughs> I've been running a lot longer than you have, Herky Turkey. I'll be just fine. Turkey? Hey, don't call me that! Eh, at least it ain't Caterpillar. He's right, Charlie. I know you're bent on getting in early, but getting there safely is more important. Mind your speed and keep an eye on the curves. Yeah, yeah I'd rather not go for a roller coaster ride today. Oh, would you two calm down? We got air brakes. We'll be just fine. I guess you're right. Just keep sharp, eh? Fine, fine, whatever it takes to shut you up. You know... Alright, thank you. The storm only got worse. Before long, the rails were soaked and Charlie was running low on sand. His brakes held though, and the little engine persevered through the fog and rain. They were doing all right on time as well, almost 20 minutes ahead of, ahead of schedule when they reached the top of the final downgrade into Johnstown. Good then. You're nearly there, Char. How you feeling? Just fine. Keep the throttle open as long as you can, though. We're gonna need some heat coming into town. Are you sure that's a good idea? I mean, it won't hurt too much, so long as the retainers are set, the brakes will hold, and we won't get going too terribly fast. That's a point, actually. Are we sure the retainers are set? 
The brakeman may not have got out of this storm. I wouldn't blame him anyways. He hasn't. We're gonna stop on the main before the final hill. So we can set him to a 20 pound reduction. What? You didn't tell me that? Uh, I'm fairly sure I did. Storm between your ranting about Dan's idiocy and your raving about- Did you? I wasn't listening. Whenever he gets going on these things, I just crank the dynamo up to drown out the sound. Wow, rude. What? Stopping in this weather will take at least half an hour. So? So we'll be late. I can't be late. For proper braking, you can. We'll try to go quick. Uh, why are we not, you know, stopping? Charlie, what are you doing? I'm keeping on time. We don't need to stop. We'll make it. Uh... Is he serious? He's crazy as what he is. Charlie, are you out of your mind? Maybe. We'll be fine. See, we're on the hill already. Just take a break, sit, and sit back for the ride. Charlie, that was a ten-pound set. We're not even slowing down. We'll take another one. Don't be shy. It's not working. Charlie! D don't be stupid, man. Take another set. What, what was that? Oh, right. That was the sound of the air brakes dynamiting. We're in emergency and we're still not slowing down. The wheels are all sliding on the wet rails. The brakes are hard on. What? That's impossible. Uh, of course it's possible, you twit. A kit leading off the setting couldn't take enough without dynamiting the train. Or we got going too fast because you wouldn't stop and let us set up the retainers. All right, all right, I give up. You win. We'll stop and set the retainers just please for the love of God. I can't make it stop, you idiot. We can't stop. The brakes are in emergency. We're running away. Running away? What? Ah! I give in! This whole thing was stupid! Dan wins! I give up! Make it stop! Crap, crap, crap! I've tried everything! I can't get the brakes to release! There isn't enough pressure in the main reservoir! We're... we're... What? We're what? We're gonna crash if we don't slow down soon! Ah! Ugh, I hate the rain. Now where the hell is that little... What do you know? He actually did okay for time. There's no way we're gonna make that curve. I can see Dan. He's sitting on the spur, smug bastard. If we don't make that curve, we're gonna go straight into him. Oh god, how the hell are we gonna manage a cornfield meat and a derailment? Oh god, I'm not ready for this. I'm too old to die. Wait, we should probably get in the tender. Right, I give up. Take over! Huh. He's moving awfully fast. Oh god, oh god, oh god, oh god! Damn! Look out! I'm trying! Yeah, yeah. Ouch. Ah, Jesus. You really are a screw-up, ain't ya? I'll stow it, Skippy. I don't care for your opinion. Well, Charlie, I must say, I hoped my humor in you wouldn't end badly. I was wrong. Yeah. I'm sorry, sir. I know. I just haven't found the heart to care yet. We're gonna clear the wreck, but I think we're gonna just leave you here for tonight. Give you a while to think about your actions today. Ugh. Yes, sir. Wait, what about me? Wait, my manager. I demand to see my lawyer. Dan! Oh crap. 
I think leaving you here for the night is a good plan. Let you get acquainted with these lovely cows you two scattered everywhere. Maybe you can settle your differences as well in the time. I hope you two are happy. No.